Yes, once again, Art <laughs> Woodson. What is it? I don't know. Is it Groundhog's Day? Yes, it is. Okay, Art. How's it going? It's fine. How's it going with you? Uh, not too bad. I think the weather outside sort of fashions probably my attitude right now. So it's kind of rainy, dreary. When I got to work today, I was apprised by management here at Spectacle Productions that I would have a guest, and he has arrived, Art Woodson. Spectacle Productions, as we like to say, is the community voice, and we're not allowed to do call to action, but we are allowed to make a call to consciousness. Art, there's a meeting Monday that you would like to tell the people about, talk to them. Well, uh, we had an election November the 7th, and everyone knew or know where the, where the mayor stands. The mayor stands with the 30-year deal with uh, Gliwa, and elections have consequences. She told you before you elected her that she's with this 30-year deal, so... Uh, as far as that, you cannot be mad at the people that you elected because you elected them. But at the same time... Uh, let, let me stop you there. 30-year deal. I keep hearing people say it's a 30-year deal, so it's a bad deal. Is the 30 years in itself the bad deal? No, the 30-year part is the bad part. It's the devil's in the details. It's the, it's the detail of the agreement that's bad. This deal right here is bad. Now, me, myself, I would amend that this deal to where it would benefit Flint because right now the only people that benefits in this deal, uh, you know, regarding money and monetary, is Gliwa and KWA. I spoke to uh, Jeff Wright yesterday. The FBI informant. <laughs> uh, the Genesee County uh, Drain Commissioner. One in the and, same. Yeah. All right. And uh, he was telling me that when he and Gliwa had uh, a meeting, he told them that they could not sell a drop of water outside the city limits of Flint. And Gliwa got up and walked away from the table because he knew that if that happened, they would eventually end up taking all his customers. So he made it in the agreement. They walked away for two weeks, and then they came back, and they said, well, we'll just sell water inside the city limits of Flint. That's where we get rail railroaded, because we should not be allowing them to be able to sell water in the city limits of Flint. It's just like right now. We're, we're with Gliwa right now. And when we had Genesee County as a customer, they allowed us to sell to other people. But by them being able to sell in the city limits of Flint, they're able to come in and take all our customers away. And right now, our revenue is coming from water, the water fund. So how are we going to really uh, run our city if they are able to come in and take our customers? So if I hear you correctly that we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't. I mean, no, not necessarily. I mean, if, if we... Uh, cancel out this master agreement and the city council turns around and instead of uh, it's a point two or point one uh, uh, amended resolution and they uh, postpone those resolutions and put in a point three resolution saying that one, we don't want you to be able to sell any water in the city limits of Flint. We are the middleman. You have to sell us the water, and we sell it to the customers like we were doing when uh, Genesee County was our customer. Uh, two, we get to put, who, you know, right now they have it to where the governor is able to appoint somebody to represent Flint. We want to be able to appoint our own person, not who the governor. The governor can get mad at us and say, I'm going to appoint somebody from Mackinac Island. You know, we want ours in writing. And then the RAP program, which is the assistance program for low income with shutoffs, right now they have it at 0.5%. 0.5% of our revenue would only be $600,000. How many people can you uh, help with $600,000 with shutoffs? That wouldn't be none, as high as our water bills are. 
that wouldn't be anything but about 60 people. And then number four, uh, we able to opt out. We able to opt out of a contract or an agreement because we don't know where Flint will be in the next uh, 10 years. We might start booming in 10 years, but we locked in to a contract for 30 years to where we able to you know, do what we need to do and sell what we need to sell. But the main thing is putting in there where they cannot sell any water inside the city limits of Flint. Now, you are encouraging the residents to come to the meeting on Monday at City Hall. Is right. that correct? Correct, at 10 o'clock. And, I'm, and I'm, the, there is a public comment portion of the meeting? Well, it's a recess. It's coming off a recess. And the only way that we will be able to speak is if, like Eric Mays like to do all the time, C Councilman Mays like to do all the time, he likes to suspend the rules. And if he see enough people there, no, more than likely he'll suspend the rules so that people can actually speak to their council person and uh, let them know. I mean, if you're for or against, I mean, you know, just read the, uh, the agreement, the master agreement, and understand what it is. Uh, last, you know, the past three days, we've been down there and everyone has been on point. Everyone has been, you know, speaking directly about this master agreement or this 30 year agreement and no one has been talking about Sally the dog across the street and uh, wouldn't come home and eat the dog food you know? we've just been on point with that where can the residents find this document or documents that you're referencing well it's too uh, it's too big to uh, put on Facebook and I don't know how to uh, divide it up to where I can put it up there twice or whatever but I can email it to them uh, because we just got it. And that's another thing. Uh, they doing things behind closed doors in executive sessions. And then when they go to, before they go to uh, executive session, they say, we have to go back there because we don't want it to be detrimental to Flint or whatever the case may be. How can we make a sound decision on what it is that we want when we don't know all the details that they're getting behind closed doors? Because they're getting details and they're getting different things and... You know, even when they come out to even discuss or debate the resolution, they got a gag order to where they can't even speak about what they uh, was in a mediation about. So how can we even get or say one, one, one of the council people agree and they want to go for it, but they can't even tell the people why it is that they want to go for it. And where is this gag order coming from? It's coming from uh, Judge Lawson, federal court down in Detroit. So, I mean, in the win, in, in order to get the win funds, the $100 million that they sent, we supposed to have three public, uh, public hearings. Mm -hmm. But how can we have a public hearing when we, ha when, when we haven't been given all the information to go up and discuss with the people why we don't or why we do, the reason why we don't or do uh, support this agreement? Well, how do we make that happen, or can we make that happen? Man, I mean, this is like the 11th hour. Uh, all we can do is, you know, come down to City Hall at 10 o'clock, and like I said, if you agree or if you disagree, you come down and voice your opinion and let everybody know what it is that you disagree about or what it is that you agree with, you know, this agreement. Uh, and hope and pray that the council... Um, or someone amends the master agreement to where it benefits Flint and not just GLEWA or KWA. Now, you have had the ear and the eyes of previous city council members. Are you able to talk to our new council members? Yeah, I mean, all of us are able to talk to them. Uh, and just like... You say I had the ear, but just because I had the ear doesn't mean that they listen, you know. Uh, and, and I, you know, I'll be totally honest, you know. Scott Kincaid, he didn't listen. Uh, Kerry Nelson, he listened at times, you know. But the only time that they did listen was uh, doing Rizzo, you know. But uh, uh, after Rizzo, uh, you know, we was just fighting f for something that we agreed upon. But after that, you know, uh, well, be prior to that, I wanted all of them gone, you know. Uh, 
some of them was on there. Scott Kincaid was on there with the KWA. Uh, he knew what was going on with that. And KWA, was that the Kincaid Water Authority? <laughs> no, it wasn't the Kincaid Water Authority, oh, but, okay. you know, all of them had a hand in it. And, and right now, you know, I'm still upset because, you know, with the, it, it started with the KWA. If uh, Dane Walling, you know, Jeff Wright told me yesterday that he was getting ready to go at it alone and do the KWA by himself, and Dane Walling jumped in and, you know, he put us in this situation. But, you know, I'm not going to take any uh, of the heat from uh, or off of Jeff Wright because all of them knew that they was moving that $85 million sweetheart bond deal that wasn't going to Flint over to the KWA. And they put us in a situation to where, you know, we have some serious issues now. So I believe the state should play, pay $2 million and some change. The county should pay some $2 million and some change. And Flint pay $2 million. And we keep our KWA. That's what I really want. And then, you know, uh, council learned about the Headley Act because the, the KWA is a program that was started under the state. So under the Headley Act, any program that's started by the state, the state has to appropriate funds to cover that program. But no one's talking about it. You know, so that's why I told the council the other night that, you know, you just can't come in in five days and really understand what's really going on. I've been out here since 2013, and I'm still learning something new every day. And, you know, we can point fingers at, you know, a lot of different people, but at the, at, at the end of the day, it's up to us to really, you know, get things moving. And, you know, I'm like a referee. Uh, I'm just out there on the field. It's two teams or three teams or whatever, however many teams it is. And if I see that you offsize or false start or pass interference, I'm going I'm to throw a flag, you know? Well, let me throw a flag right now in my headset. I'm getting some questions. All right. Here's a question. With the onset of the KWA, it's been rumored that the governor was using this KWA pipeline as a cover for fracking. Is that true? Not the governor, Jeff Wright. Uh, you have to understand that the governor was against KWA at first. They were against it. And Jeff Wright uh, and a couple of more people, along with Andy Dillon, which was the uh, treasurer at the time, they advocated and went down to uh, Governor Snyder and advocated for two emergency managers, which was Mike Brown and uh, Ed Kirks to come down. And then that's when they got the, the KWA started. Now, they have fracking over in Davidson right now. A lot of people don't know that. And Davidson, uh, I fish out there at Holloway Reservoir. Uh, they don't want it out there. So when they came up with a ban, the state came up with a ban against bans. So Davidson got smart and said, they, well, we're getting ready to do a noise, a noise ordinance so that that would slow them down and stop them from doing it. If you uh, Google MDEQ sells land for fracking, you'll see where they just sold a whole bunch of land over in Lapeer and Davidson for fracking. I knew you knew some things. I knew it. <laughs> Let me ask you this. The Flint water crisis... Is not over. No. It's been likened to a tidal wave that has been promoted by a tsunami. There's some crap coming down the chute. We have not yet seen the health concerns that are about to come. Is that true? Right. Uh, we have allowed people to get in front of cameras and not know the full scope or the full details of what's really going on. You have to understand that this started May, I mean, April the 5th, 2014, when they switched over to the Flint River water. May the 2nd, 2014, that's when we had TTHM readings, trihalomethanes, and they supposed to be 0.80. If you weigh 154 pounds, drink, drink two liters of water a day at 0.8 parts per billion, in 70 years, out of 10,000 people, three people are guaranteed to die. And 
I was at the time uh, May the second. It was point one nine six. It was eight different test uh, uh, test uh, areas. One was one point one nine six. Another one was point two one zero. I mean, they was almost double what it's supposed to be, and. That was for, from May the second, two thousand fourteen, to I say August of two thousand fifteen. In Camp Lejeune, in nineteen fifty three to nineteen eighty seven, they had TTHMs. All right, and it's over two hundred thousand veterans right now, since nineteen eighty five, that has been fighting for their benefits and compensation and medical attention. Uh, one veteran that I helped—that's how I learned so much about TTHM. He passed away, and he had over 70 doctors since 1972. He was uh, stationed in Camp Lejeune from 1968 to 1970. He was a cook. A lot of people don't know that uh, the majority of, it's not you drinking the water uh, with TTHMs. Uh, it was the vapors uh, from mm -hmm. cooking, from showering, from bathing. And right now, I try not to tell people uh, because it's happening I just found out recently because I went in for uh, chest pains and they found a nodule on my lungs. And when they came to me, uh, they were saying, well, you have a uh, GERD and you have a knot on your lung, un uh, unchanged nodule. So the GERD was new. I mean, both of them was new, but me having a nodule, it wasn't new to them. They had found a nodule in 2015, but they didn't tell me. They being who? The VA hospital. Okay. So, you know, I, I kept it to myself. And the only reason why I'm speaking about it now is that uh, a friend of mine that lives over a street behind me, uh, I heard that he was in the hospital. Well, he had to go to a doctor's appointment because they had seen something on his lung. So I asked him uh, when they find out, call me and let me know what it is. So he called, I talked to him. I spoke to him yesterday, and day before yesterday, and he told me that they found a nodule on his lung. So now I'm starting to put two and two together that it's this water. And uh, I have a friend. She has multiple melanoma. Down in uh, Camp Lejeune, one of the presumptive illnesses for uh, TTHM uh, through benzene is multiple melanoma and I have found six people right now with multiple melanoma and the majority of them they said that their cancer is different because it's more aggressive it's real aggressive we having uh, people from Flint with aggressive cancers you know it's not like the normal cancer I know personally I've lost three cousins just over the summer from June, July, and August. One had been notified within a month, and she was out of here. Forgive my ignorance here. I heard you say GERD right. as related to your throat. That's a reflux. Uh, is that different than a gourd that's uh, related to the thyroid, or is that one in the same? I couldn't even tell you. Okay. I mean, they told me, I, you know, that's what it was and told me that I need to eat different. And uh, I told them I'm going to keep on eating the same, man. You know, so I had researched it. I researched everything else, but I had researched that, you know. <laughs> Off camera, we talked a little bit about our coroner or coroners, and nobody has seemed to call them to the table to ask them, what are they seeing with the passing of our residents, and your response to that was, what they're seeing, um, they're seeing what we're seeing, but they won't say anything about it. Uh, Mike Belichick, which was the Genesee County Health Director, he was he was he was a putz. I almost call him a putz. All these people was in it together. Um, the cover up was the crime, and they they all knew what was going on. I have I have documentation right now showing that they lost 258 pages of uh, lead tests. And then I looked at the tests from 2014 to 2016, only 10 people, only 10 people uh, uh, 
tested over five point five, I think it is. Only ten people out of two out of out, from two thousand fourteen to two thousand sixteen. Only ten people. When we had a lead crisis, and all you find is ten people that tested uh, over five. I mean, that's ridiculous. Well, the health department has a very shady history of hiding health information. Yeah, they do. I mean, the reason why I know that they got caught, uh, back in July of uh, 2016, I was out of town, and I received a phone call, and uh, the guy said, my uh, mother, uh, infectious disease doctor, just came in and told my mother that she has uh, Legionella. So I called CDC and told them, I said, hey, uh, it's a case over in McLaren right now uh, that has CDC, I mean, that has Legionella. That was on a Friday, and he told me that he was going to get back in touch with me. Well, that Monday, come to find out, somebody down at Genesee County uh, uh, Health Department had wiped data, wiped the data out of the computer. You can read that in the newspaper, too, M Live. Uh, Somebody had wiped it out, and, and they didn't know who wiped it out, didn't hear anything else about it. But they wasn't going to tell anyone. They wasn't going to tell anybody about it. 92.1 WFOV inside the Jazz Jacuzzi, my guest, Art Woodson. And he is encouraging you, ma'am, and you, sir, to get down to Flint City Hall to this very important public hearing. Correct. I mean, you learn a lot, man. I mean, you know, like the hearing yesterday, uh, Nick Lyons, the D, uh, DHHS director, you know, they saying how uh, the state, Dr. Wells, Rich Beard, uh, and others tried to prevent them from uh, testing, Wayne State testing for Legionella, and they didn't want them to test from the uh, filters, you know, I mean, if you don't if you don't really sit back and read, and all you do is go by what people tell you, I mean, you're gonna be lost forever. Uh, knowledge is the key, and reading is fundamental, you know. And if you don't if you don't edu- educate yourself, research for yourself, you know, people can mislead you, and it's upsetting on how people in the city of Flint has been used for so long and trusted people for so long that was going to do the right thing, I don't care, black, white, pink, blue, or whatever, you know, people in Flint trusted them, and they uh, put them in office to to do what was right by them. And it's not happening, but until you start reading and understanding what's going on, they're going to keep on putting a banana in your tailpipe and, and fooling you and telling you uh, what's, telling you that the sky is green when it's blue. The meeting Monday at City Hall, 10 o'clock, regarding the Flint water source. This is a meeting that should not be missed by anyone who can be there. Mr. Woodson has a wealth of knowledge. He knows a lot of big words. He's got all the numbers, or, well, most of the numbers. Yeah. The data. And if you sit down and listen, it says we're not getting the whole story. Our final words. Final words. Uh, inbox me your, uh, your your email address. At, uh, you can go on my Facebook page, Arthur Woodson, A-R-T-H-U-R-W-O-O-D-S-O-N. And if you email, if you inbox me your uh, email address, I will send you uh, the master agreement for GLEWA. It's something that you should read over the weekend. Your kids, your grandkids, you, everybody, this right here, um, I mean, this is the decision that... Uh, you know, your grandkids would have to pay for. Your your kids would have to pay for. You might not be here, but your your kids, everybody might have to pay for this down the road. So you need to really uh, read this uh, agreement, this master agreement, and find out if you agree with it or if you disagree with it. I mean, it's your opinion, it's your choice, it's your decision. 
but you really need to read and see what it how how it's going to affect you. It could be made no plainer, ladies and gentlemen. Our future is in our hands. Show up Monday, 10 o'clock, Flint City Hall. That's the third floor, City Council Chambers. Make your voices known. This interview has been brought to you by Spectacle Productions inside the Jazz Jacuzzi. Thanks, Art, for coming through once again. Thank you. Back to the Jazz Jacuzzi here at 92.1 WFOV. Our voices, radio, yours and mine. It's the Jazz Jacuzzi, and it sounds like this. You're still alive.